Hello, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp and welcome to another video in this mini series, how to use the DALI API. In this video, what I would like to teach you is how to figure out where your OpenAI API key is and how to store it safely for the apps that we're going to be writing on the next videos in this mini series. So for that, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go to the OpenAI documentation and you're going to see that there's a lot of stuff here, documentation, examples, the playground. There's a lot of things that you can learn from this environment. At this point, if you're here, you probably already have created an account with OpenAI. If you don't, you have to do it yourself. You have to create an account. And when you create an account, I believe at this, at least when I did it in this video, you're going to be given some free credits. So for example, if I go to personal and I click on manage my account, you can see that I've already been using the API. I was using it yesterday uh, to try things out. And you can see that uh, I, I, why do I have so many requests today? Anyway, you can see that I already spent like $2 of my credit using this, right? And then, so it's a good place to see where you are in terms of billing, et cetera, et cetera. And then something that is where you can get your API key is if you go here and you click on view API keys, or if you click here, then you're going to get to your API keys section. The API key for open is global for all the open AI applications. It not, it's not just for DALI. You can use it for DALI, but you can use it for GPT. You can use it for all the models that are served by OpenAI. And then what you can do here is you can create new API keys. You have to be very careful because when you create a new API key, that key is only going to show up once. All right. So I'm going to copy it, but that API, I need to save it somewhere safe because I will not be able to check or read that API key again. And if I lose it, I'm just going to have to regenerate a new one and, and scratch all the ones that I had before. Okay. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to copy and paste and I'm going to, um, I'm going to put, put it somewhere here on a notepad that I had here on my secondary monitor. So you can see that I have the one that I was using before, the one that I just generated. And what I also wanted to show you in this video is how to store this safely in a way that is good for programming practices. Because I want you to think of your API key as literally your password. Anyone who has your API key and generates predictions and generates images with your key, then that, that means that their requests are going, to go in, are going to go into your billing cycle and you're going to be paying for those. So you probably don't want to be sharing your API key with someone that is not authorized in your organization. So what happens with that is that when we create requests for DALI or for any other model, you might be writing code of the kind. For example, I need to create a variable and that's going to be open API key. And I'm going to say that this is going to be something like this, right? If I were to write this code and if I were to share this code with people in my organization, in my GitHub repository, et cetera, et cetera, then basically my API key would be public. It would be shared by everyone, which is really, really bad practice because again, anyone could take your password and use it for their prediction and basically bill you for their predictions, which is something that you really, really want to avoid. So the way to avoid that is typically there are several methods, but the one that I'm going to be showing here in this video is to store this API key as an environment variable. So the way that's going to look like is I'm going to go to my PC and I'm going to right click here on properties and I'm going to go to advanced system settings in this window. I'm going to, and this is for windows. All right. And here I'm going to click on environment variables and you can see that I have my user variables and my system variables. So what I can do here is I can create a new environment variable. I'm going to call this open AI underscore API underscore key. And I'm going to paste this, the key that I just got from my server. Okay. I'm going to do that. And again, I'm doing this publicly on this video and you can see my API key because I will reset it and I will delete it after I make this video. Okay. But, um, uh, so then, and then I can press OK. I can press OK. And then now my system will have a global variable available to anyone that is writing 
code in my system that I can use and <clears throat> that I can use. What that means is that, for example, if I were to open now, if I were to minimize this and I'm going to open, for example, a Windows PowerShell, right? And I say, can I echo the open AI API key, right? And if I do that, oh, actually, wait, let me look at what is the syntax for this. Yes, yeah, sorry, I forgot how to do that in PowerShell. The way you do that is you echo, and let me I scroll this up so that it's a bit more visible. You echo, and then you use the dollar sign, and then you point to the environment. And then inside of the environment, I want to print the open AI. Uh, API key. And if I do that, you can see that I print the value of my API key, right? Within different programming environments and within different frameworks, the way we will access that API key will look different, okay? But then I will show what that looks like depending on which programming language we're using, all right? Am I missing anything other things that I wanted to say? No, I think this is good. If you want to know more about what environment variables is, I have a video somewhere, uh, the car should be popping up here somewhere on the corner about what environment variables are and how to configure them, etc., etc. Okay, so make sure to check that video. Beautiful. We are ready with our API key and I think we're now ready to start writing um, to start writing requests to the to the um, to the DALI, to the DALI model. All right, let's do that on the next video. And the first thing that we're going to try is we're going to try to request predictions directly from the terminal, not even Python, not even Node, just straight up from the terminal. Let me show you how to do that on the next video.